for this project, I've ordered a carbon fiber 9cm mini brushless FBD quad copter frame from Banggood. Look how small the box is. Uh, I've also ordered a bunch of other components here. Alright, now let's get to work. After opening the box, I found this diagram for assembly. It looks quite straightforward, but it took me a while to get all the standoffs nice and square. It took a while to adjust them so that when you lay them on a the flat surface, everything is square and parallel to the flat table surface. So this step is done. Next step would be to prepare the mounting for the um, fry controller ESCs and then the models. Once you have the four models mounted on this base frame here, and then the last step would be to mount the halo on top. So yeah, this frame will take quite a while because you to get everything nice and square, you gotta adjust and make sure you use Loctite. Otherwise the metal screws will come loose and flat due to the vibration. Alright, off to the next step which is to mount the ESC and fright controller. At this stage I have the four models mounted and also I have the four standoffs mounted for the ESC. This is the 4-in-1 race star ESC. It took me a while to solder the four models to the 4-in-1 ESC here. This motor has been soldered to the micro pads here and so on four of them and basically here you see the orange, blue, yellow and gr green these four colors are the signal to the ESC so each of this color will go to your fright controller motor output so I've sorted it I've sorted it out in this way so that I know that the orange one is for this motor, the blue one is for that and so forth Next step, I will be mounting a plate on top and then I will use 3M double sided foam tape to mount the flight controller. The soft mount should help me to dampen any vibration. And if you notice here, this red and black alongside the green, this is the BEC output 5 volts from the 4 in 1 ESC. And depending on the fright controller you're using, you may want to use this 5 volts output to power your fright controller. For me, my fright controller has a built-in regulator, so I am using this 5 volts to power the video transmitter instead. This is the plate I'm going to use to mount the fright controller. I cut this out from 0.5mm fiberglass sheet. Let's see how much this weighs. 1.1 grams, not too bad. Alright, I've mounted a fright controller using 3M tape onto the mounting plate, and there appears to be sufficient clearance to prevent the electromagnetic noise from the ESCs from affecting the fright controller. The other thing you might have noticed is that I've trimmed off the four corners of the fright controllers to give clearance to the spinning props. Next step would be to connect the four color wires yellow, blue, orange and green to the signal output from the fret controller itself. Now before we hook up the four color wires of the 4 one ESC to the fret controller, we need to calibrate the throttle of the 4 one ESCs. So right now I have made a harness here which all four wires are merged into one wire which goes to the throttle of the receiver here. So as I throttle up, and throttle down, all four motors should respond accordingly. Now to do the throttle calibration for all the four ESCs, I'm going to power off the 4-in-1 ESC using this separate JST plug here. 
Now the 4-in-1 ESCs is turned off, but notice that the receiver is still powered on. And for the throttle calibration, we need the receiver to get full throttle signal. Sorry, you get, get um, the throttle above the mix stick, which is here. So now I put it at 3 quarter stick, and I'm going to power on the 4-in-1 ESCs. Now it's reading and I go to full throttle and then I go all the way down to below mix stick and all the way down to zero throttle and that's done. Now let's test the calibrated throttles travel. In this shot, you can see I have the four ESC input wires soldered to the fright controller. I only need to solder to the signal pin of each connector. There's no need to solder the ground and the power because the fright controller and the 4-in-1 ESCs are sharing the same power lines. Let me turn around and show it to you. As you can see, the power lines are merged to the taps here. With that, this drone is pretty much friable. The only leads here are for the video transmitter and the 5 volts camera. And I also need to put on a proper connector for the LiPo pack. These are the Lichen 23.5 props which I'll be using. I guess I'll mount them first before putting on the halo. Now for this quad, most people use the Yixuan 3-in-1 camera unit with BTX. It's really convenient because you can just lift the lens right through this CNC mount and using 3M tape to secure it and then you could mount it onto the quadcopter in between the two hoops. But what I've done here is I have separated the camera from the 3-in-1 unit but unfortunately I have damaged the video transmitter board and that leaves me with a working camera so this is how it looks like now I have the camera part of the 3-in-1 and then I put in my own video transmitter here with deep switches this is 200 mini watts and it's pretty light to save weight I remove the aluminum CNC mount and I use a piece of wood instead so let me show you how it looks like, close up. Here's the piece of wood at the back and the transmitter and this is the camera part of the 3-in-1 which is the camera itself with the step down regulator that does the noise filtration and it's good to have the camera mounted in front because I will not get to see the two hoops in front and I secure the camera using two red standoffs here hope you can see it in the video now all that's left is to program the clean flight so that we have all the PID settings required for this thing to fly as you can see here I have the OTG end of the cable plug in and now I'm going to plug in the USB end to the computer And you can see that the light is flickering. Next thing is to connect the fright controller to clean flight. Here I have the program open and I'm going to hit connect. At first I could not get it flying because all the PID settings were way too high. Let me show you how low the PID needs to be for this thing to fly properly or even take off. Eventually I settled down with these uh, values so you could see that P is 0 0.7 for row and pitch and I is 0 0.007 and D is as low as 6. These are crucial because with the stock values the quad could not even make a steady hover. It would bounce up and down in the air and at first I thought I had a 40 fret controller but that isn't the case because once I have the correct PID settings tuned in 
the quadcopters able to fly really smooth. 